Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome to a NIFScope tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to apply different textures to meshes using NIFScope. Now, before I go ahead and dive into NIFScope, I'm just going to show you on the creation kit itself. Uh, one of the options that I do have a video on, I'll put it at the top right, uh, that you can use, which is essentially texture sets instead. Um, now, texture sets are very handy, especially in the case of things like banners, where you'll have one mesh for a banner, and then you'll just have a load of textures and texture sets basically point at that particular texture uh, using the main texture itself and the normal map uh, as you can see here um, and away you go however in the case of many meshes you may have certain sort of options ticked on the mesh where they've got a bit of specularity to them a bit of a glow to them uh, and texture sets don't always work now when you're making something uh, quite different that's not as simple as just a slight change in style uh, you may need to do uh, sort of texture changing via NIFScope in order to do things like change UV maps something else I also have a video on I'll also plonk that up there uh, this is sort of part of that whole whole series uh, so texture sets here like I say I've got a video it's good for that but what we're going to do is we're going to apply this directly to the mesh itself now obviously like I say there are advantages to that uh, one of which being that you've got more control with like UV maps so if something doesn't quite sit right you can do that and it makes sure that you can tweak everything to look exactly how it needs to uh, within NIFScope so if I just load up NIFScope, and again, I've got a video for that, I'll put that up there as well. Um, you can check out pretty much the, the playlist on how to get this just generally set up. So I won't be covering the basics here. Uh, so I'm just going to assume that you've got NIFScope up and running. If you're wondering why I'm looking up, it's because I have to use one of my secondary monitors now because of having an ultra wide of my main. Tutorials don't look fantastic on that, way too small. Uh, so what we're going to do is... Essentially, we'll open up, up a mesh on here. I'll quickly show you. Let's go with the uh, planter stone. This is a really good example. So this is something that I stole from, I believe, Solitude. I say stole. Um, <laughs> something that I took from uh, a, I took a Solitude mesh, and I basically wanted it to fit in with, with farmhouse stuff. So you'll see you've got your different nitrile shapes, parts of the mesh that have different textures applied. As you click on them, uh, they get highlighted. And if you go under the nitrile shape under here, something I'll mention before I carry on. If you use the uh, special edition version of NIFScope, then all of this is very, very different. And the thing that I actually recommend that you do is you work with the, the old NIFScope for the original Skyrim, get your mesh changes done on there, and then just convert it. Again, I'll put a video. Oh, I'm pointing up here, but it's actually going to be up there. I'll put a video at the top right um, for that as well. I've got a lot of editing to do. Um, <laughs> but everything sort of ties together here. Uh, so essentially what I'd do, just make your meshes in this version of NIFScope. Um, it's version 7 at the time of this video. I'm not sure if they're really going to develop it much more. Uh, and then, like I say, make sure it's for the, the legacy version. You'll know if it is, because it will be laid out nicely like this. Um, and then just port it. Uh, it's just, just easy to work with. I do the same with mods in the creation kit. So once you go under the Nitro shape and you go under the BS Lighting Shader property, uh, you've got BS Shader uh, texture set here. And if you click on here, you'll see you've got the same sort of thing as you saw in the creation kit where it's got the, the base texture itself, the DDS, and then you've also got an, a, a normal here that they usually put like an underscore and N next to it. It's just sort of the way it's done. Uh, the way things tend to be named in Skyrim. So you've got uh, Textures, Architecture, Farmhouse, Stonewall. Now, if you have got your NIFScope set up correctly and you followed my previous video, as I mentioned earlier, then this will start with Textures. Now, when you click on the little star on here, you should be directed either close to or at the Textures directory. So what you'll need to do is make sure you know where your Skyrim directory is, which is under uh, usually and for most people it might change if you've done a custom installation but it'll be under Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim, Data. That's going to be like your data folder uh, and in my case it's on my G drive so it's going to be whatever drive that you've got it on. So in this case what it tends to do for me it may do the same for you as you do more of this stuff is uh, you might find that it will automatically jump to where you were previously. Uh, so in my case, it was in textures, but it was it was sort of closer to under this TRM folder for a, a new video series I've been making recently. So if I just double back and go to data textures, what this is showing me, it's showing me all of my loose textures, just loose in my data folder. Now, if you wanted to select something that is um, used by another 
model in Skyrim, you've got a couple of options. You can either unpack everything from the Skyrim ESMs. I think I've got a video on that. I'll put that up there as well. Uh, you can unpack everything and have a folder where you've got everything sort of unpacked like I do uh, to allow you to, to sift through and look at them and find out what you need. Or you can pretty much just copy the path from another mesh. Now, in this case, I'm going to show you what you do here first if you've got uh, one of your own uh, textures uh, like this here. This is going to look terrible. It's, it's not the right mesh at all uh, for this to be placed on. But you would just simply double click the text that you want and it will apply it onto there. Now when you go to upload your mod as well to the Nexus and share it or package it up for your game, you will need to make sure that you include all of your uh, meshes, textures, any resources that I use will need to go into that BSA that you make. I've got videos on that. I'm not going to go link in those. You can go ahead and find those on the channel. Um, I'm going to assume that you know how all that stuff works at least. Um, but there you go. You would just apply the texture and make sure that all this is uh, included. And then when it comes to the normal, I don't have a normal map for this because for this particular texture, I use something else. But let's say, for example, I was using something from um, what mods have I got here we go let's say a saddle you'll see that I've got my my normal map here and I could use that normal map it looks terrible obviously because this is just mashing random stuff together uh, but there's the option that you have if you've got your own textures loose in your folder your own custom textures it's as easy as that but like I say what if you have a situation where you want to use an existing texture from another mesh and you don't have everything unpacked. Now I'll show you that, that I've got all my stuff unpacked. If I go into uh, Skyrim here, I've got an LE unpacked and in here I've got vanilla and then textures and I can look through all the different textures in the game and then I can get and figure out what the file paths are and put it in there so it'd be like textures and plants and whatever would be in here. Now, like I say, in a lot of cases, uh, if you're like me and you like to try and use vanilla textures wherever possible, and then just change things like the UV map, then here's how you want to go ahead and do it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take a common thin table and I'm going to change it to have an upper table texture. Now you can do this through texture sets, but that issue that I mentioned might come up where it doesn't quite look right and it's got some shine to it. So let's go ahead and find out, first of all, the table's actual model. And for this, you will need to have... Um, that particular mesh that you're looking at unpacked so that you can go ahead and copy all the all the stuff across so you can actually open that mesh so I'm going to find the, the table that I want first so table common thin here it is that's what I'm going to use so what I've done clicked into it clicked on edit under the model there and then I'm just going to highlight click and drag and highlight that model name there uh, in fact, no, what I'll do, what's better to do, just get the NIF name. Right click and copy that instead. And then if I navigate to my Skyrim and where I've got all my unpacked uh, sort of Skyrim BSAs, go into vanilla, go into meshes, and then I'm just going to paste in the Windows search common table thin 01, give it a few seconds, and then I'm going to open that up. That should automatically open in NIF scope. If it doesn't, you'll have to set NIF scope as a default. <clears throat> Excuse me, voice is going. Uh, so if I put that up here, you'll see what I've got there. This is the one that I want to change. If I go into my tri shape, BS fade node, BS shader texture set, I want to change this to use the same texture as something like a, an upper class table. Now, I already know exactly what texture for upper class is going to work for this and sort of what table to open up. Uh, so you basically need to find a texture that you want to use from wherever and, and sort of hunt that down. In my case, I'm going to use an upper class table. So if I go upper table here and edit, you'll sort of see it's a very similar texture to it. And I want to apply this. Now, as it is, I know that the common and the upper textures actually match perfectly together in terms of being applied to a mesh. So I wouldn't need to do any UV map changes. You may want to check out the previously mentioned UV map video if you do want to use a texture where you're like, mm, I want to use that part of the texture on, on my thing, but it doesn't line up. Uh, then you can use that that video at tutorial to learn how to sort of tweak the UV maps to get it to fit. But for me, this is going to fit perfectly. So in this case, I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to get that NIF's name. Go into here. Paste. Searching the same place. Just all my unpacked stuff. I'm going to 
opening there. So essentially the easiest way of saying this is you're opening the mesh that has the text you want, you're opening the mesh that you want to change, and then you're just going to copy it across. So I'm going to click on the bit that I want, go into Nitro Shape again, BS Lighting Shader Property, and I've got the BS Shader Texture Set. Now you've got two ways of doing this. You can double click on these, Control and C on the keyboard and copy. Uh, hang on, let's try and get these open, overlapping on each other. And then you can double click on here and you can do paste and you'll see it changes and it's it's lovely, looks beautiful. Or, and you do that for the normal as well, or we'll undo that. And what you can do instead, which is sometimes a better idea, is if you want to copy all the same settings here, including things like specular color and, and glossiness and all those different things like the emissive color, Click on the BS Lighting Shader property, Control and C, or you can Alt click, Block, Copy Branch, does exactly the same thing pretty much. And then you can go into here, click on the same thing there, <clears throat> hold down Control, hit Delete, or it's right click, Block, Remove Branch, and then click on the Nitri shape, you'll see it's disappeared because it's got no texture, do Control and V. And that has pasted all the same properties and it should automatically link everything together so you don't have to link all the trials or any any of that crap up. And it should have all of that sort of sorted out for you. And then all I've got to do is do save as and then I just navigate. I've got nice quick links down the left, something that might be worth doing if you do a lot of work in the creation kit. Uh, I just go to my Skyrim directory, go into data, go into meshes. And then I make a folder for my mod. So oh, I've actually got one here saying Dark Fox 127s. So that's good for this. And then I can put it wherever I like. And I can just rename it to um, Thin Table Upper. Or what I do, I usually prefix with my mod name. So I just put DF in this case. And then I would save it there. And then drag and drop it into the creation kit. So if I just show you that as well, just in case you're not aware. So I'll save it in there. And if we go back to the creation kit. It's a static item, so what I can do is have uh, world objects static highlighted. And then what you can do, easiest way of doing this, is navigate back to where you've just saved it. Go into Darkfox127 and drag and drop that in. And you should see that it appears. Double click into it, click edit. You might find that if the creation kit was already open when you made this thing <clears throat> and you drag it into the world, excuse me, <coughs> oh dear. and you drag it into the world you might well find that it doesn't appear and it puts a big red exclamation mark if that happens hit f5 on the cell it will refresh and it should be there and there you go it's in there so i can just drag and drop it in i can change the the idea if i wanted to anything that i want use it in the world job done and that is just about it for another tutorial video. So please let me know what you think in the comment section down below as always. Also, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you're not already. Uh, you can also check out the rest of my work over on www.darkfox127.co.uk and uh, even check out my community Discord. Got a lot of helpful, friendly people on there if you're struggling with things. Uh, also, please do consider helping to support this channel and also my live streaming that takes place twice a week over on Patreon uh, or just over on my website in general. You'll find a section on there. So thank you all very much for watching and I will speak to you all next time.